Hello, and welcome to From Paper to People podcast. This is a family cookbook episode, and I promised you these at the end of last year, and then I've been a little bit missing in action. So I want to thank you for your patience and explain that I am in the process of packing up a house that my family has lived in since 1966. I'm not even working right now. I've actually had to take a leave from my job in order to be able to do this. So I'm not producing as many podcast episodes as I have been, but I ask you to bear with me and I believe that you will enjoy this particular episode. So I went to school at Indiana University in the 1980s and there was a lot of really great stuff about being there. Even though there were towns that were actually kind of biggish towns, and there were towns that had big draws among people who were just, you know, touristy visiting in the area, it still had a really soft sort of homey country feel. Now, I don't know what things are like anymore. I haven't been back to Bloomington in a long time, and I haven't been back to those towns in that area, but I can tell you that I came away with a permanent love for a specialty of a restaurant in Nashville, Indiana, called the Nashville House. They used to make deep fried biscuits and homemade apple butter, and they would serve it at table just like you would any kind of a bread. And it was one of the best things ever. So I actually did keep a copy of the fried biscuits recipe. And I found a wonderful recipe for homemade apple butter that comes from a 1917 paper in Indiana. So I'm putting these two recipes together to give you a truly Hoosier experience. And here we go. The Nashville House fried biscuits take a quart of milk, a quarter of a cup of sugar, two and two-thirds packages of dry yeast or a sixth of a cup of dry yeast, a half a cup of lard or shortening, six teaspoons of salt, and seven to nine cups of flour, which is like a big range, but okay. It says, add yeast to warm water, add other ingredients, and let dough rise. Work into biscuits and drop into hot fat. This recipe will make about seven dozen biscuits. They can be frozen individually and stored in plastic bags. When you work them up, don't let the biscuits rise too high. The fat should be slightly hotter than 350 degrees Fahrenheit. If the fat is too hot, the biscuits will be soggy in the center. Now, the amazing thing to me about this is that this restaurant, the Nashville House, was known for these biscuits, I mean, all over the place. And they sold this recipe on a card for a buck a pop. And I thought that that was absolutely fantastic. Now I wanna take you back to 1917 to a recipe for apple butter. It comes from the Hancock Democrat in Greenfield, Indiana, and it's dated the 18th of October, 1917, which was a Thursday. It was on page two of the newspaper. And this is the article, apple butter. There is no better way to use good apples and the sound portions of windfall, wormy, and bruise apples than to make apple butter of them. While almost all varieties of apples will make good apple butter, those with distinctive flavor and good cooking quality are most satisfactory. Such old standard varieties as Northern Spy, Rhode Island Greening, Tompkins King, and Smokehouse are excellent for this purpose. But by the way, I'm not sure that any of those varieties actually exist anymore. I don't really know. I just buy stuff that's in the grocery store. Returning to the recipe, the summer varieties also will make good apple butter. It has been found by recent tests in the United States Department of Agriculture. Well, they would know, wouldn't they? They have a tasting kitchen, I guess. Who knew? If apples, of course, texture are used, it is desirable to cook them and put them through a colander or coarse wire strainer before adding them to the boiled cider. Sweet apples are sometimes used with tart apples. Overripe apples are not desirable. And that's probably because they'd be mealy. Apple butter is made by boiling down fresh sweet cider to half its original quantity, then adding apples which have been peeled and sliced. The apples are either added directly to the boiled cider and cooked in it until the apple butter is done, or are made into applesauce, which is cooked into the boiled cider. 
The cooking should be continued until the cider and apple pulp do not separate. Then the butter will be of the right thickness when cold. It takes usually about equal parts of sweet cider and peeled and sliced apples to make butter of the right consistency. In other words, if five gallons of sweet cider are used, it should be boiled down to two and one half gallons, and five gallons of peeled and sliced apples should be added, either raw or made into applesauce. Two things essential to making good apple butter are long, slow cooking, four to six hours, and constant stirring. If sugar is used, it should be added after the cooking of cider and apples is about two thirds done. About a pound of either white or brown sugar is the usual amount per gallon of apple butter, but more or less, or not any, may be used to suit the taste. And the apple butter that we had on these biscuits was a little bit sweet because the biscuits themselves didn't have that much flavor. They were just had the flavor of the oil, basically. So what you want to do is you want to kind of balance that out for yourself and see how you feel about it. Apple butter is spiced according to one's preference, about half a teaspoonful each of ground cinnamon, cloves, and allspice for each gallon being a common mixture. These are stirred into it when the cooking is finished. While still boiling hot, apple butter should be packed in hot sterilized glasses, glass jars, or hermetically sealed stone jars, or crocks with tightly fitting covers and be sterilized in steam as follows. Set the containers filled with tops on in a vessel filled with false bottom and deep enough to hold them. Pour in a little water, put the cover on to hold in the steam and set over the fire. Begin to count time when the steam starts to escape and after five minutes, 10 minutes for a half gallon or 15 for larger containers, take the containers out to cool. Then set them away for future use. Do not disturb the covers until the apple butter is to be used. If the covers do not fit tightly, place waxed or oiled paper in them to make a tight fit before sterilizing is done. The sterilizing is done for the purpose of preventing any spoiling of the top layers of apple butter and also to take place of a layer of paraffin, which, though a good seal, is now quite expensive. And this is 1917. This would have been during World War I, and I can understand why paraffin would have been needed for other purposes supporting the war effort would be expensive for home use. All fruit butters and similar products should be sterilized in the same way and then there is no author given. That is simply the article. That's a great starting place but that's an awful lot to do, right? I mean I'm not going to make apple butter if I have to like seal jars and boil stuff and everything like that. Therefore, my recommendation to you is with this as a background of the mechanics and the chemistry involved in at making apple butter, there are some slow cooker apple butter recipes out there on the internet. I would say find some of those. Wade through all of the stories on the blogs and all of the many, many flashing ads that are really annoying. And you will be able to find a great apple butter recipe. I did find one, but since I didn't have permission from the author, I didn't use it. I can tell you that what the author says is, I peel and core the apples, I cut them into sections, I throw all of the ingredients into the slow cooker and let it rock all day. And that's how she makes apple butter. That's great. I mean, you can then, you know, use an immersion blender. This is one of my favorite things about Indiana. And the saddest part of this, I'll close with the sad part. I'm sorry. The saddest part of this is that the Nashville house closed a few years ago. And when it did, it took its fried biscuits with it. So I'm very, very lucky that I actually did buy a copy of this recipe as did some of my friends and some of my sorority sisters. And it does get shared around amongst our groups on Facebook from time to time. I do highly recommend it as something that you have at table and that you have in the autumn, although any season is a good season for deep fried biscuits and homemade apple butter. Now, have you entered the contest yet? If you go to my blog, you will see at ancestorsalivegenealogy.com a post about my birthday. My birthday was recent, and it, the post itself is called Birthday Fun, Promote My YouTube Channel, You Could Win Groovy Playing Cards. So I want to give you the particulars of that. It's super easy to enter. There are three things to do. The first thing you do is you actually do this 
on the post on the website. You can do it on any of the tweets that you see that have this. You can do it within the Facebook group or on the Facebook page. But on any post that has this information, you can just type happy birthday to us below it, below the post. If you see it in a Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook post, you can like the post too. That's also helpful too. And this is very important because I need your help. Share my YouTube channel to one social media outlet in a public Facebook post, a tweet, an Insta post, a TikTok video, whatever. Just talk up that YouTube channel for just a minute. There's a link to it in this blog post about happy birthday to us. And you can also find it by going to YouTube and searching out my name or from Paper to People podcast. It will pull up. Third, send me the link to the post. It's really easy. Just let me know where you did it. Was it on Facebook? Was it on Twitter? Tag me in if you want to at Ancestors Alive or at FPPP podcast. And that's it. You're entered. And for every 57 completed entries, because I've just turned 57, I will choose one winner of a deck of cards of that winner's choice from my Zazzle store. And there are over 60 designs there now. All kinds of crazy vintage photos and images and mid-century modern patterns and all kinds of stuff. They're great playing cards. If there are two winners, that will be because there are 114 submissions and so on. So please help me and celebrate with me by getting a deck of cards in exchange for promoting my YouTube channel. So the more you get the word out, the more winners there will be, the greater your chances of winning. And I will, of course, owe you a permanent debt of gratitude for helping me to get the word out about my YouTube channel. When you do this, be sure that I have your full name, street address, and email so that once I do make the announcements, I can actually send you the cards. That's pretty important. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Make yourself some deep fried biscuits and homemade apple butter. Do your research. Don't be a Jeffrey. And above all, expect surprises. Mm -hmm.